The Search Podcast USA Edition Series is sponsored by PGC. PGC are the longest serving employer of record in North America and can compliantly engage contractors across both the US and Canada on behalf of staffing and recruitment businesses. Our turnkey solution offers a unique access point to the largest staffing market in the world. To find out more, visit us at pgcgroup.com. Hi, everybody. Welcome back to another episode of the Search Podcast. Uh, I'm Elliot Manning, Managing Director of Cayman Recruitment UK and US. Um, we specialise in the rep to rep market uh, across all sectors and levels. Uh, today, I've got a guest, uh, Samir. Uh, you're in New York, Forsyth Barnes. Set it all up over there. I'll let you uh, take over an intro, mate. Yeah, appreciate it. Uh, Samir Prince, uh, Senior Vice President of Sports Entertainment for Forsyth Barnes in the United States. Uh, and yeah, as you said, moved out here last summer, um, June, July of last year, uh, set up our first international office out here. Brilliant. I'd love to say eventually, because I remember you were trying to get out there <laughs> way before then. Um, you know, we spoke um, back, you know, when it was kind of all kicked, kicked off with COVID and it was a big delay and it was, it, what, what happened? It must have like been quite difficult because you're trying to, you kind of set yourself up mentally to settle over there. And then COVID came and kind of put a little bit of a hold on that. Yeah, I mean, it was it was challenging for us as a business, right? As it was for, for every business, yeah. I guess, during that that time frame. But for me personally, I don't know. I don't know if you want to call it more challenging, but a, a different challenge in the sense that when I first joined FB, was asked the question, you know, where where do you see yourself in five years? And I said, you know, I want to be in New York. So for me, it was something I wanted to do since day one. Um, and, you know, we were building towards it. We kind of got to, you know, 2019. Okay, it's now happening in 2020. Getting all the wheels in motion to get out of here. And, you know, all of a sudden this pandemic hits that no one was anticipating and yeah. just throws uh, multiple spanners in the works, um, which, you know, was luck. It was, was very challenging. I think we'd, we'd all got very excited for it. We're all looking forward to being out here. It happens. You think maybe it's going to be a short-term thing and, you know, we'll, we'll be back out there in a couple of months. But, Obviously, that's not that wasn't the case. Um, I guess the one thing that I will say though is I'm I'm grateful that we didn't move out just before COVID happened. Yeah. You know, if we'd have moved out in let's say February 2020, COVID kicks in in March, April. All of a sudden, the first what year and a half, two years of your your life, yeah. you're in New York, you're uh, working remotely, you're not socializing, you're not going out meeting people, you're just sat in an apartment paying a lot of money and not actually living the New York lifestyle. So yeah. challenging, but, you know, I think we, uh, in hindsight, it was probably the the right thing for us. Good stuff, good stuff. So um, for you, what at what point in your, you know, working career with, with FB did you decide, I'm going to start the US market, um, you know, I, from London, obviously, or, I and mean, it kind of just talked me through the motion of it, because again, like, was it a case that you went and built clients from scratch, you're leveraging clients off the UK? How did you open up the doors there? Yeah, a bit of a mix, really. So we started off servicing the US market, I want to say properly, uh, in about 2018, 2019. Um, that's when we really started making some good headway, uh, actually started to have a focus uh, within that this region as a team rather than just, you know, the odd bit of spot business here and there type of thing. Um, once we started doing that, you know, things were going well. Obviously, as you know, things were then leading up to, to 2020 when we we're going to move out. All of a sudden, COVID happens. Without going into all of that again, but one thing that did really um, lend us with was the opportunity to actually start building out the foundations of the market remotely at a time where everyone was at home, not doing much, not going out, gave us opportunity to actually work our own hours. You know, I wasn't too bothered about starting at midday and finishing at midnight because there wasn't anything else to do in the world. So, you know, we started really making some headway then where other people were also sat at home, not doing much, happy to jump onto video calls. So we built a lot of those good relationships from a foundational perspective during that time. And then by the time we made the move, it was then just rather than putting names to faces, it was putting, you know, faces to handshakes, if, if that's even a thing type of thing. Yeah. So, um, you know, it was a different way of of us being able to to get out here, which which certainly helped. Brilliant, brilliant. And the market itself, how's that taking off over there? Because, you know, I don't see much of it. Um, I find it a very, very attractive industry to be working, especially in the States itself. How's it, um, how's it gone in terms of, you know, not from a client perspective, but just generally like, you know, candidates, social media, et cetera? 
Yeah, really good. Um, I think we're, we're in probably two of the most exciting industries to be working in, in sports entertainment and in uh, retail. Um, so, you know, for various different reasons, I guess, from a talent attraction perspective, it's great because we're working in two very exciting industries. Um, you know, you speak to most people in New York, they'll either have a, uh, an interest in fashion and um, or sports and some form of entertainment. Um but the market's been, it's been, you know, naturally every business has their challenges, but it's been overall, it's been good in the sense that the areas that we're targeting are emerging markets, they're growing areas, um, they're areas that typically tend to have a lot of volume. Um, we typically tend to get a lot of traction and yeah. it's very rare that we'll just do one bit of spot business with a client and move on. Um, yeah. You know, we're, we're pretty well positioned to be able to come in and, you know, become the overall talent partner of a business. Yeah. Um, which is, you know, can be challenging to do, especially in a market like New York. Everyone comes to New York because they want to make it big. And, um, you know, we just have to take that into consideration when when you are making a move. Is It's not yeah. an overnight thing. It does take time to really build things out. And that's what we've learned. And that's what we're, you know, we're kind of now starting to reap the rewards from. Excellent. I mean, we'll try and come back to that. But I want to be uh, diving into a little bit more about your journey in terms of personally into the US itself. You know, you... Did you research? Did you make multiple visits to kind of figure out, you know, how your life was going to be when you were going to be working there? Tell us a bit, yeah, a little bit more about that. Sure. Research, none uh, whatsoever. Uh, okay. For me, it was uh, something I've wanted to do for a very long time. I mean, plus watching Home Alone as research and maybe, but um, yeah. no, it was, uh, it was mostly through the visits and yeah. uh, time that we spent out here before making the move. Um, the very first time I moved out here, sorry, came out here, um was on a holiday and i remember w looking around in times square thinking yeah if anything this has just cemented my um interest in wanting to move out here yeah. um and you know the the journey was going back to what i was saying earlier the journey was very kind of up and down in the sense of you know i knew it, it was coming and it was happening you think it's going to happen at one point it then gets pushed back it then gets pushed back again because we thought we we're going to do it in 2021 2022 comes around we're working towards the interview day and working through the embassy to try and get that date locked in can obviously be quite challenging um and you know did you through find doing that, that process sorry to jump in did you find that process yeah. quite straightforward getting the visa to move over there was there any real kind of difficulties with that we are all trained and the type of business that like to over prepare with everything that we do yeah so that process was actually really easy because we prepared for 101 different outcomes and it was probably the most straightforward and um seamless interview that I've, I've ever had if I'm being honest with you it was there for about heard this a couple of times that, actually yeah um the process to get the interview was probably all of the things that I didn't see Tom Scott they were both involved in in that um and you know I know that there was a lot of kind of back and forth and going on with those guys so you know um from my perspective anyway I, I found it pretty straightforward okay <laughs> Yeah, well, this is it. I've, I've, I'm doing it now in a one application visa for a member of, of Cayman. And yeah, it's 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 quite stressful. It's, there's a lot to it, more than I ever realised or expected. And, you know, Naomi's like, yeah, how, how are you doing? She's like, I'm just waiting to get out there. It's like, you know, and that's cool. Yeah. That's fine. That's just what we do. Um, <laughs> in terms of once that came through, the visa's sorted, you haven't done your research as such as you might have liked or could have. You've, you're in New York. What, what what do you do? Like, how does it work? Do you think it was as easy as you, well, maybe it was easy as you kind right. of thought it was going to be? Yeah, it's, 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 it was very tough at first anyway. Yeah. Um, there are so many things that you don't think about when you're thinking about moving somewhere. You think about all the big things, right? Where, where am I going to live? Where is our office going to be situated? Uh, I should probably live somewhere that's relatively com within commutable distance of the office. Yeah. Yeah, great. Yeah. Um, you know, the, all the standard things that you typically think of are, are fine. Uh, it's the very little things that you know are necessary, but you don't anticipate just how time consuming and the amount of paperwork you need to do to get them done. So getting up, setting up a social security card, which you kind of, is challenging to do if you don't have a bank or address or statement that proves that you live in the United States, yeah. especially when you first moved, in, moved into the United States. Um, a bank which you can't set up without a social security card. So, you know, for the first month we got paid into our UK accounts because we just didn't, we weren't set up to get paid into our US accounts yet. But little things like that. Um, the first few months are naturally challenging. Uh, if you're the type of person that's used to move in and relocating and finding your feet in a new area, you'll be fine. 
for me, it was the very first time I'd moved outside of England, let alone outside of, um, let alone to the other side of the world, right? Yeah. Uh, it's quite a pretty big uh, jump to go from having friends, family and loved ones all uh, around me and living near me to being dropped into this massive city with not a lot of friends or family around at all. So that first part was quite challenging, just um, getting used to things, making friends, um, you know, having to actually go out to bars and speak to other guys and actually make friends with guys, which was quite a bit of a strange thing for me to do back in the UK. I've got my close social friends. I've never kind of needed to go out and do that. But, you know, these are the things that you don't really think about before you move. You think friendships will just happen naturally or I'll meet someone at work and it'll be fine type of thing. But, you know, you've got to do things like that. So, yeah, there was a lot of things that I didn't really think about before making the move. And then you just kind of figure out as you go along. But all in all, once you start figuring it out, there's it's pretty straightforward from there. Have you have you found that all the Brits that have come over to the US stick together? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah. I think I think we're. We're that way inclined, aren't we? We we like our own. Uh, and that's not to say I've not made any American friends, made made a bunch of American friends as well. But um, you know, my my closest friends out here are all British. Um, yeah. you know, and that's both the people that have moved out here with us and friends that I've made outside of work um are all British. So um I think there's just that level of kind of common interests. Um, you know, the conversations are maybe a bit more um mutual in the sense that you're both interested in similar topics right football yeah. for example or soccer as they call it out here it's, you yeah. don't really find too many people that are interested in that so little things like that that you need to take into account as well there's two things like right? so every time i speak to a recruiter that's from the uk in the us they just tell me straight away oh just go out and eat the village you'll be fine everyone's there there's a couple of local spots that everyone goes to and half of them are full of recruiters anyway and, you know, you'll meet everyone and it's all good. But the other thing they say to me as well, and one of the guys I had on it recently, he he said to me, like, yeah, you got to put yourself out there a little bit to try and kind of get to that, you know, that friendship that you might want with people. But everyone that's pretty much there was in your position at one point, you know, uh, you know, whether it was six months ago, a year ago. So they all very, un very much understanding of it. And not m pretty much most of people, and you tell me otherwise, have gone out there independently um and not as a group and you know it's kind of how it all comes together taking recruiters out of it or even british people out of it most people that live in new york aren't from new york yeah. so whether they're british or not the person that you're speaking with is as you said right as either someone who's moved to new york and has one at one point of their life been through that process so they understand and they relate to it or they've recently moved to new york and are probably in the exact same boat as you um yeah you know, there are multiple people that we met with that had moved to New York within a very, very similar time frame to what we had done. So we we're both in the same boat. And then you find that, you know, that conversation is a lot easier to have and yeah. very, very um, straightforward to building the relationship from there. Um, yeah. yeah. Fine. Back onto the, the business aspect of this for yourself, going over there, building this market, you know, working in a really lucrative space. How have you found the difference of the clients and the relationships and the business development to the US as it is or has been for you in the UK? Um, similar in a lot of aspects, um, but but different in, in a lot of others. I'll, I'll go into that in a bit more detail. So yeah. the different the main differences for me are, I feel like in my experience anyway, um, and in the markets that I've worked in, people in the UK are less inclined or interested in taking a conversation um, when they are they're more than likely interested in doing business in the us most people are happy to take a conversation it's that conversion piece of how many conversations are you taking to actually doing business with people that's probably the, the biggest difference um you know back in the uk if we were to spec out a candidate and get a response from it we think great like you know we've got a good chance of securing this piece of business here out here, you send out a candidate, you'll get a bunch of people that will come back, come back displaying interest, but not everyone wants to hire that person. Maybe they want to just want to have a conversation with them, network with them. Yeah. Um, speaking about sports specifically, it's quite a relationship-driven market. So naturally, it takes a bit of time to get up to speed with uh, you know, who the key decision makers are, et cetera, et cetera. But then who are the relationships that they've already got in place and what can we do to be differentiating ourselves to give them a, a different... Um, path or a different avenue to, to look at when it comes to sourcing so you know there are a lot of similarities but I think the differences I mean the fees are, are obviously um entirely different as well right um the good thing about here is you know you, you might 
look at a target ahead of you and think, okay, well, that's a pretty punchy target. But then a couple of deals in, you're making some decent headway and, and scratching a lot of that off. And you think, okay, cool. Yeah, this is this is this is definitely doable. We're gonna smash it. So and that's where we're at right now. You know, for this queue, we're as as an office, we're ahead of where we need to be. And um, you know, looking at it at the beginning, Grant and I both looked at each other and said, okay, these are some pretty, pretty punchy numbers here, but let's make it happen. And you know, it, it eventually it has. Brilliant. Can I ask you a question, which feel free to not answer, but as a recruiter, billing 250 in the UK and the equivalent of that in the US might be half a million dollars. Do you or have you personally seen a greater financial reward hitting those kind of billing numbers in the US um, yourself? Because a lot of people, we all talk about how big the fees are over there, how much money you can bill over there compared to the UK. But is it personally, financially are you financially better off personally, rather? Um, I think it's probably a bit too early for me to give you a definitive decision on it. Um, yeah. Speaking generally, I would say that the earning potential in the US market is larger than the earning potential in the UK market. But that yeah. obviously goes down to a number of factors, right? So A, the industry that you're working in or servicing, B, the commission structure that you've got set up with the employer that you're working for, uh, C, where you're actually situated and living. Uh, New York is a incredible place to live but it's the most expensive city in the world oh, of course. um so you know taking that into account um you know the the cost of living in new york is ridiculous so even if you're earning really good money you're all, you're also seeing a lot of that money leave your bank as quick as, as it is coming in um so yeah I'd, I'd, I, if i were to give you a general answer i'd say that the earning potential in the us is greater than the earning potential in the uk in my opinion Definitely. I think a lot of people look at the US and it's more of a, a lifestyle move as much as it is financial. You know, living in the States is you, you might have a better um, lifestyle for bringing up kids. You might have a better lifestyle for loads of different reasons, right, which we don't have to go into. But um, ultimately, where you live in the US and what you make, it kind of balances out and counters the place that you're, you are. I, you know, you said New York. You know, if yeah. you earn loads of money in New York, you can spend it just as quickly as you make it because it's yeah. expensive, but it's also got that luxury feel to it as well. And, you know, that's the whole fun of it. Um, OK, no, I just was curious to know to me kind yeah. of the differences that I, I've seen. And um, but, I, yeah, you're right. And everyone I've spoken to, yeah, the only potential is far more greater over there. Um, tell us, but kind of like finish off with a bit more about kind of the plans for the business for the rest of this year. What do you want to see? What are the, what are you aiming to achieve? And for those listening in, you know, and want to go to the US, you know, and speak to Samir, talk to them about the market that they do, because it, it is not many of them. And it's, and it's, as I said at the beginning, it's extremely attractive. Yeah, for sure. So main things for us this year are twofold. It's growing, um, growing strategically. Um, I think like a lot of other businesses, you made the mistake um, as a collective, as a business, rather than specifically for the US, but of hiring really fast and trying to get to that number that we want to get to as quickly as possible and making a few mistakes along the way. Um, but we want to hire strategically. Um, and the second thing is we obviously want to make sure that everyone's enjoying themselves by making a lot of money along the way, right? Uh, we've got an incredible commission structure in place. Yeah. I literally sat down with uh, one of the guys on my team earlier, just looking at his um comms check for what he's got coming up at the end of the month and um you know it's, it's he's been here for three months and it's more than he earned in his previous employer which he was at for two and a half your years. commission is one of the strongest in the market if not you know top 10 percent in my opinion so yeah it, it right. does speak for itself so if you're in this market where you know we spoke about astronomical fees and the um commission structure that we've got in place to match that you can really earn life-changing amount of money so you know, if, if anyone out there is interested and, you know, wants to learn more about um, just the US market in general or uh, potentially moving out here um, and, you know, thinking about joining FB along the way, then always happy to have a chat. Brilliant. One more bit of advice to finish off. Um, if someone is over in the UK or Europe, whatever, and they are planning on making a move over to the States, New York, any words of wisdom? Um, good question. Um, Biggest thing I'd say, it kind of depends on the person that's moving out here, but if you were moving out on your own, um, find a social circle sooner rather than later. Um, you know, put yourself out there, be willing to um, go out and, and meet new people and, and accept the fact that you have to do that if that's the type of person that you are. 
Yeah. Um, for people with families and things like that, I think it's more straightforward. I'd probably advise that you find the right area that you want to live because New York isn't probably the best place in the world to be raising a kid or raising multiple kids. Yeah. Um, so find the place that you want to live, maybe just outside the city. And um, yeah, that's probably what I'd say. Brilliant. Samir, pleasure as always, mate. Um, yeah, I love catching up. And for those listening in, if they have anything they'd like to discuss, you know, please feel free to reach out directly. Uh, if any of those are looking to make a move to the US, speak to Samir as well. FB, you know, Forsyth Barnes are fantastic. But I used to call it FB now. Um, fantastic <laughs> business. One of the best commission structures out there in the market and a really lucrative industry that they're focusing on, which uh, if you want to be in the US and you like sports entertainment or retail as such, yeah, couldn't do it in a better place. Samir, thank you very much for your time as always. And uh, yeah, I look forward to catching up with you again soon. Yeah, no problem. Thanks for having me. Cheers, Elliot.